We need to talk about these train derailments, uh, a lot of the things that have been going down. I need to be careful with my language in this video, but if you have not been keeping up with what is happening in the world, I'm about to say something a little controversial for this audience. And I would tell you that the best news I've gotten recently has been through TikTok. I know people say it's controlled by, you know, and we're being spied on and you know, all this stuff. Uh, honey, you, you were being looked at the whole time anyway. <laughs> okay, so TikTok has evolved into something, at least for right now, I don't know that it will last, but for right now, where people can get out there who are living through the things we're hearing about to give us more information. So that is how I have been able to keep up with the fires, the train derailments, um, the Michigan State incident, the El Paso Mall incident. Uh, what else? Uh, UFOs. I mean, all of these things happening right now. Threats of war. I get it. All right. So I wanted to make this quick video. I am going to be doing a live uh, event on February 18th, and it's going to be 7 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So that would be 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern. And that will afford us the opportunity to speak to each other face to face where you can bring your concerns and, you know, we can just talk it out. But for right here, we are really, really, really seeing the deconstruction and massive awakening that's having, unfortunately, to happen through these moments. And what does that mean? We're going to discover what's been hidden. We are uh, definitely taking charge of our own health. We are becoming more aware that we need to watch what's going into our bodies. I know I have not been feeling well. And, you know, I, you guys know if you follow me for any amount of time, I get migraines and things. But had sinus infections and all that. And it was really lingering for a very long time. And I started looking around my home. And I really started looking at the ingredients on my foods. And I was like, you know, I've always tried to be somewhat aware of that. But, you know, I would fall into, you know, I, I like my snacks. Right? <laughs> or I like this kind of food or whatever. And it really, I really kind of got this message of uh, it's time. It's time to take this very, very seriously. And watching our water supply, obviously, because, you know. We don't know what information uh, is accurate out there. So be very, very careful. And, you know, so I was looking at the food supply that I have in my home. And then I was looking at my cleaning products. And I thought, you know, I have natural stuff that I use. But I had some tough cleaning to do. So I had some of the more commercial stuff that I was using. And now I'm sick. So just, I know this isn't new information, but I think it, you know, we need to circle back and, and look at it. And this is definitely a time that we want to try as best as we can. This is a difficult conversation, but to keep our frequency and our spiritual selves in a healthy place. What does that look like? Well, it does not look like not looking at the news. Now, you don't have to look at mainstream media news. But don't tune out your fellow humans, okay? So let's go into how to do that. Like I gave a resource of TikTok. That is only because people who are in the regions that things are happening can turn on their camera and they can start filming. And I heard some people say, I don't want to look at TikTok because you know people might be filming gore. I personally have not run across that. Um, I don't know. The FYP, the For You page is tailored to the P. I don't, I don't know. Okay. But I haven't seen that. And of course, be discerning. Take care of your own mental health. But, you know, don't be in denial about what is happening. Processing it. We also, as we're processing this information that's coming in from all over the place. Okay. We want to be very mindful about seeing through people's messages. This, this is the big one. And 
it's hard to even give examples. I have very, <laughs> very clear examples. But if I were to share those here, the backlash would be immense. You would accuse me of victim blaming or something along those lines because people love to twist a narrative. I'm saying be there for people who are in trouble. Absolutely. But there are some who are trying to like sort of piggyback off of tragedies to have an outlet for their hatred. If you have not seen, there was, you know, video going around of volunteers going through donations that were supposed to go to Turkey and Syria clothing. And they're holding up things and wrinkling up their noses and tossing it aside. And that was one video. And is it possible that somebody literally tossed some not very useful stuff in there? Sure. What probably is more likely is that people were in a hurry trying to gather uh, donations. Things could have slipped in there. Or they went to bigger you know, places where donations are dropped off and got a load of donations from them. Right? So it hadn't been pre-sorted. That's what I'm thinking probably happened. But what really got me was when <laughs> these volunteers are holding up little girls' coats. And they're coats that we would typically see in North America. But these volunteers, again, are wrinkling up their noses. And this person was making commentary about how, you know, this isn't good enough. And they're holding up dresses that probably, who knows, maybe it was donated by someone who really doesn't have a whole lot, but they wanted to help, and so they put it in. And they're, like, really scanning these items to look for little spots and saying, this isn't good enough. You know, don't dump your fast fashion onto us. Ooh, all the, and they were saying it with disdain. A lot of judgment. And a lot of wasted time when seconds matter. So think about that. These people are saying they're judging these little girls' coats because they're too Western. Well, children are freezing after they just went through one of the most horrific things I can possibly ever imagine. I'm telling you at least that example of many others that I'm not talking about here, but um, that would be an example of maybe, this isn't really victim signaling, but these are not people who are out there themselves putting on the gloves and digging in the rubble, but they're holding others accountable and saying, you should be flying over here and doing this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, like I said, your clothes aren't good enough for us. You know, I guess, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> we need to start seeing through stuff like that and stop taking that in because that's going to lower our frequency as well. People, Imagine the person who donated that stuff maybe the mother of the children who donated those coats are looking and going oh my gosh I thought that was going to help another child it does it's not a fashion show okay it's cloth on a body to make sure you don't freeze to death my goodness right so there's going to be a lot of that um and a lot of people coming out and whatever their dysfunction is they're going to try to twist that story so that somehow you're to blame. You should feel guilty. It's, uh, you know, you're not doing enough. You don't care enough. And even when they, you know, whatever group of people say you don't care enough and you show up and you show that you're caring and you still get backlash, it's because they don't actually want peace. They don't actually want the support and the love. They want a platform, again, an outlet for their hatred. So be careful with that. Make sure we're paying attention to that. Of course, help the victims all over the world. But we, we need to be careful. We need to definitely be careful about that. If you came to this video because you want to know what's going on, let me tell you straight out, you already know what's going on. It's right in your face. It's obvious. And if we're going to get through... I've been saying this for years. I've been saying this since the day I started doing this professionally. We need to be spiritually fortified. Now, what does that look like? I want to give you an example. I have been scrambling around, taking on a lot of stuff. And that's cool. It's all stuff I love, but <laughs> that's what I do. I kind of overbook. Maybe I need to look at that for myself. What am I, you know, trying to avoid through work? You know, I'm I'm open to... Self-improvement as well. But I thought it was really interesting. 
there was an opportunity that I was talking to someone about and it sounded very promising. The person I was talking to seemed really lovely and seemed like it was heading in a really good direction. Today, I did a really in-depth angel, archangel and spirit guide meditation to allow whoever wanted to come forward to come forward. And I did a raising my frequency. That's what angels help you do. Raising my frequency meditation. I would say about an hour later, I heard back from the people who were handling that opportunity and they said, you know what, we're not going to do this. Now, for some of you, you might go, then who would ever do that? You're missing the point. You're missing the point. I thought this was going to be a good thing. I raised my frequency and now that falls off pretty drastically without even another look. So when we raise our frequency, we need to be ready for that. And I can tell you, I have, you know, done these meditations. I will do them on this channel, but you know, we, we need to handle the stuff here first, but to talk about it, right? And then we'll, we'll do the meditations another time, another video. But, you know, if I, I feel like a lot of people don't want to do that kind of work because they know deep down in that's the kind of shift that's going to happen. You know, they, they might look at their partner and go, I realize I don't want to be here, but I don't want to, you know, run out of this. And then the partner breaks up with them. It's the fear of change. But let me tell you right now. It's the moment. Armageddon? No. <laughs> the end. The end of a crappy way. Sure. And it's going to look awful. It's going to feel awful. And if you're one of those people, like those volunteers and the people who are making TikToks, you know, oh, by the way, the person who made that TikTok saying, you know, about the fast fashion or whatever, they turned their comments off. So on some level, they knew what they were doing was out of bounds, okay? <laughs> like it was out of bounds. But, you know, when we start realizing this and we're not afraid of the change, we're not giving in to people who spin a narrative and maybe victim signal in some cases or... um you know, try to twist, like I keep saying, twist the narrative and blame people for things. When we step above that, I know that sounds, I don't mean above it, rise above it. It's not that. It's when we recognize it and stand away from that. And we connect back into that peace. And people are like, how could you possibly feel the peace right now? I know, honey. I know. I'm right there with you. My family is in Ohio. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not watching to see what the, the latest and greatest is. All while things are happening all over the world. It's not just in the United States. It's happening all over the world. You need to be informed. You need to be a powerful processor. And then you need to be working on your spiritual stuff. And yes, I'm an angelic medium, and so I go the way of the angels. But I'm telling you, people who have shown up, no, I don't want to disrespect anybody, but people who have shown up and they're they're doing spiritualism, right? Where it's like the manipulation of fourth dimensional energies in whatever way, whatever tools they're using or whatever their mindset is. Uh, I guess it's okay for now, but I'm telling you. Higher dimensional beings. I work with angels. That's where we need to be. That's where your clarity is going to come from. That is how your blocks are going to be released. Not by channeling. I mean, again, no offense to anybody who's channeling souls that didn't go into the light and stuff like that. They're, they have very important work as well. Um, but that's when we're talking about spiritual growth and getting through times like this. That's not going to be the practice that helps you. Let me say that again. That's not going to be the practice that helps you. That's, that's not it. The other thing that you're going to see will be people who are letting darkness work through them. Come out and be nasty, abusive, diminishing. And then you're going to have people who are also letting darkness work through them 
but they try to seem like they're bigger people. Those are the ones who are saying, oh, it's just a troll. Let them go. There are moments where you have to just go, okay, I'm not letting that into my sphere. And then there are other times that you are becoming an enabler and you have to set it down. You have to set down that boundary, whether it's popular for people or not. It's messy. Stop looking for clear cut answers. It's not coming. And what's more, don't take that accountability and throw it at a medium or anybody who's in a spiritual practice and say, well, if you don't know the mind of God, then you're not good at what you do. Or if you can't tell me exactly how to take my next steps because you don't want to invoke your own free will and process and get your clarity so that you know how to move forward, you're not actually doing the soul contract work. So the surface level is not going to look great, <laughs> right? So, and then you want to throw it at somebody else and say, okay, psychic medium, tell me how to live my life. There will be plenty of people happy to take your money to give you a moment of, of reprieve. And if that's valuable to you, that's wonderful. Okay. But then what are you going to do? You're going to come back to that psychic medium for the next step? <sighs> do what you're going to do. But these are very serious times. And you need to be doing that deep work. Let me know what your questions are. Let me know what else I can share. You know, again, this is just my perspective here. Um, what are you experiencing out there as far, and please don't, you know, the thing that when I open up the comments like that, it's not so that someone who has gone into the brainwashing realm to go, you know, start quoting something that doesn't have, like it's not authentic. Okay. That's not what I'm saying. Really dig deep before you leave that comment and then put it out there. Sit with it for a second. I guess what I'm saying is don't just give lip service here. How are you actually feeling? It needs to be discussed. That's why I popped in that live for February 18th. There needs to be conversation and communication about this. And yes, I will be doing what I can to put tools out there, to put messages out there. But I can only put it out there. Are we going to work together? Because it, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. And I said in the 2023 overview video, this could be a good year if you know what good looks like. It'll be that kind of thing. We'll see the good when we get to the end of the year and look back. And we'll realize that things happened that were awful, but we learned something from it. Or we cracked through potentially a centuries-long block. Maybe this will open us up to healing with our fellow humans. Maybe we can start finding some grace and forgiveness with one another and realize we didn't have to be enemies. We were trained to be enemies. It's going to be a long process again. Leave your comments down below. Let me know how I can show up and help. And if you really want this message to get out there, please make sure that you are sharing these videos. I'm not the only one out there putting these types of videos out, but I have noticed that, you know, a lot of people who do authentic practice and really care about it, they are getting drowned out by, see, again, I don't want to like <laughs> throw shade at like, you know, other content creators, but it needs to be said. Like some of these very shallow readings done by people who don't even know what they're doing, claiming they're talking to angels, but they're like holding this really dark deck in their hands. You need to be careful. You need to be very careful. Share this with people. Hear the message. When you find another content creator who's given an authentic message, but, you know, and you're suggested it's something that's, those, those are meant to be distractions, guys. I'm sorry to go there, okay? But they're meant to be distractions. I don't know what's going to happen. I have 
seriously contemplated walking away from this type of work many times over because it's falling on deaf ears. And I know there are some of you out there that hear this and that's wonderful. And I love that you're hearing it. And I love that you're passing it along. But there are others who are flat out choosing because they think it's the right thing to do. They, they are going into a lower frequency and saying, this is where I'm going to stay. There's not much more I can do or people like me can do. People like you can do. At some point, we're going to have to just accept that we've put it out there. And humans, humanity, they've made their choices. I hope it doesn't go to a dark place. I really don't. And it's not meant to scare you. It's meant to get you thinking. Remember that example I gave? I was about to go towards an opportunity because I'm like, this is great. You know, this, this feels okay. But it probably felt okay because of the person I was sitting with. She was lovely. But I bet this wouldn't have been a lovely situation on the whole. I do a, a raising frequency meditation and an hour later it falls off. You're going to see all kinds of that. All right. But you need to be willing to go in there and accept whatever is going away. We'll leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.